Hey guys, welcome to Herding Little Cows to the Glory of God. So I am going to do a baby essentials, like newborn baby essentials of what I found as a um, experienced mom, what I would spend my money on if I did not have much money with a baby coming into the family. This is not to say these other items are not useful in some way or that they're like not necessary. They are just things that I would not spend a limited budget on to be able to purchase. Um, this is, this is my own thoughts. So I will share as I go through this list, but, um, for those who don't know and are joining our channel, my name's Sarah. I am married to Mark. This is baby right here. Can you say hi? This is Gideon. He's two months old. Oh, I'm sorry. We have nine children, one not living at home anymore. So eight children in the house and the ones in the house range from age 18 down to this little guy. Um, we have been through the baby stage a lot. We have been in places where um, we have had very little money in certain stages of life. And so I just wanted to share what I feel would be necessary to buy if we were to have another baby um, right now. And I'm gonna tell you, this is like some postpartum stuff coming home directly from the hospital. So if we were to find out right now we were pregnant again, which isn't how it normally works for us, but the things that I would spend money on or ask if people said, what do you need for the baby? These are the things I would ask for. Um, if again, had a limited budget, these other things are all, um, wants in, they're not needs. These other things are just wants in my world. I'm not saying they're not helpful. And please, if you have something that I have not named on this list, or I said was just a want for me, but you found it as essential for your baby, please leave it in the comments so that other people can learn from each other. So here we go. Essentials for baby. You need something to cover your baby's bottom, to um, keep yourself clean, to keep the rest of your house clean, all of that stuff. I use diapers. We have gone back and forth between cloth diapers and um, disposable diapers, and I cannot tell you which one's cheaper depending on what you have for resources. So if you live somewhere where you have to pay for water or you have to pay for a laundromat, it may not be the cheaper option to use cloth diapers. But if you use somewhere where you have a well and you have a washing machine that you've had for years, so you're not thinking of like buying a washing machine for this, um, it could be cheaper for you to do cloth diapers. So again, I can't give you which one's gonna be cheaper in your situation. In our situation, I use disposable diapers right now. I still have cloth diapers that I have used on other children, but we have a child who's nine, who has cerebral palsy and epilepsy. My husband has a disability and I have a disability. My husband has dystonia for those who haven't seen. And I have a form of muscular dystrophy that makes certain tasks hard because I don't have hand strength. So between all of those, I do not have the time right now to do disposable diapers. I mean, cloth diapers. Um, if we came into a hard time, I do have the cloth diapers available and we have laundry here at our house. So I would use them if we needed to financially, but right now we can afford the disposable diapers. So that is what we use. For those watching this video, this guy really wants to go to sleep, but I'm sitting and he doesn't like me sitting when I'm wearing him in the, or uh, in sling unless he's asleep. So, um, so you need something for the baby's bottom. There's also, I have never used this, but I wanted to say it for people who would like to. There's something called infant communi elimination communication. That's what it's called. And you look at your baby and kind of discover their cues of when they are using, when they're going to the bathroom, when they're peeing, when they're pooping. You kind of watch because kids tend to um, grunt or you know move their eyebrows, those types of things. And so the idea of elimination communication is to watch what your baby's doing, put them over some type of toilet or trash can or some type of um, bucket and make a certain noise and that's their cue of, oh, I'm supposed to pee or I'm supposed to poop. Um, for me, I've never, tried it because I haven't wanted to spend the time and energy to do that, but it is something that um, some people are very successful with. So I'm just mentioning that here, but you need something for the baby's bottom. <laughs> so diapers is what I use. And I have found the loves diapers. Um, I don't have children that have a lot of diaper rash or anything like that. So we have found love diapers to be very useful. Um, and I don't find their smell to be 
as overwhelming to me as some of the other diapers and also the Parents' Choice brand. Love's diapers used to be cheaper when I would price check them, but now the Parents' Choice is cheaper for me, the Walmart brand or whatever. So diapers and wipes of some type. We have used in the past washcloths that we just get wet and we use that and we throw it in with the wash, especially if you're doing cloth diapers, that's a good way to do it. You can use wet paper towels. Um, right now I currently have wipes. I'll show you a package. I have these wipes currently um, because they're easy to keep next to my bed and I don't have to go get something wet. Um, something else people do, I will explain this later, but if you have a little bottle of some type that you could keep a little water in your room and a roll of paper towels or something, there's also recipes online to be able to make homemade baby wipes that you either put paper towels or washcloths in a container with some water or um, water and baby soap together and then use those for your wipes and then you would wash the cloth ones or throw away the paper towel ones. So something to wipe up your baby's mess. Um, I have found that sometimes people use a lot of wipes in a diaper change. I tend to not, um, I use only as many wipes as I need to um, because I just don't want to rub down the baby's skin more than I have to. Um, babies have sensitive skin and so you want to make sure it's clean, but they also don't need to be washed all the time. Um, babies aren't actually really getting, I mean the poop on them is dirty, so you're trying to get that off. But babies in general, regarding bathing and stuff, babies are not dirty. Um, the, all the stuff that they have on them when they come out of the womb is actually very good for their skin, the vernix and the amniotic fluid and everything. And you don't actually need to give your baby a bath um, for any real length of time. So I will be totally honest here, this guy has been washed up but has not took a full submersion bath and he's two months old. Um, so there's that. <laughs> um, the, so the baby's skin is very um, full of good bacteria and all the things that are good for life. Um, and so using soap on them dries out their skin and washes those good properties off them. So I wash as little as necessary. Where he's not eating food, he's only got breast milk, that is not a problem to stay on their skin. Breast milk's actually very good for you. So I do not wash him up after every meal. The main parts that I wash on him are his you know, diaper area and right under his neck because he's a little chubby baby and he's got little fat rolls. Um, so another thing on bathing that I've seen, and I will explain this bottle later um, in this video, but um, if you fill this bottle with water, it makes a really good spray, like a little tiny shower. And I've seen that this has been recommended to use for like washing the um, fuzzies out between a baby's toes from their socks and that type of thing. I had never thought of that before, so that's a very good use for this bottle. We'll get to that when I talk about mom's needs. <laughs> um, so the three month old, so I'm saying like these are like zero to three month essentials. So you need diapers and wipes, something to wipe up baby and to keep their butt covered. You need some clothes. So I'm going to explain my favorites. I love, I'm trying to get back far enough, these bag outfits. So this has a little piece of elastic at the bottom. You slide the baby into it, you know, down over their head, but then their legs are still open and diaper changes are really easy. I love these for the zero to three-ish months. Um, they do ride up as you're holding them and I don't mind it. I adjust the baby, but some people in my family are not a fan of the outfit riding up and they feel like they're always adjusting it. So we also have other clothes that baby goes in, but if I'm dressing them, these are the ones that I prefer. And we have some of these types of outfits and I'm going to explain. Um, these down here are buttons. I don't know if you can see that. Hold on, let's make it hide my face and not see, if you can't see it in this light, but these are buttons down here um, and Buttons are hard to do in the middle of the night. Um, some of these outfits are like this and then have a zipper down the front um, to put on or buttons down the front. I suggest zippers because zippers are so much easier to use on a little wiggly squiggly baby. But of course I couldn't find any today while I was doing the video. So you need clothes. This is another one. The amount of clothes you need depends on your um, laundry situation. Um, if you're someone who has to go to the laundromat and you go once a week, you need to make sure you have enough clothes because babies um, of this age are very likely to pee through their diapers or poop through their diapers 
on a regular basis. Even if you're changing them, it's just how their bodies are formed. Some babies fit in the diapers better. Just expect a lot of blowouts during this time. So I would say that if you have a way to keep up on laundry, you could probably get by with just five to 10 outfits if you're willing to do laundry regularly. But if you're someone who has to go to the laundromat, I would suggest more than that so that you could um, make sure you had enough to get through. So clothes, nothing fancy with the clothes. Um, I mean, there's such cute outfits out there, but you can spend a lot on baby clothes. Going to the thrift store, you can find these clothes for a dollar, a dollar fifty, um, the two items that I showed you, and you could outfit your baby for like 20 bucks. <laughs> so um, depending on your financial needs again. Okay, a sling of some kind. I would say that this is, this is my baby, best baby, thing that I would suggest is a sling. So this is a piece of fabric from Walmart. It is five yards long and I cut it in half because the width was so much that I was able to cut it in half and have two slings. So I wear these. I have this one in the house and I have another that I keep in the van. Um, and I have a video on how to tie it, but I wear baby in this. If it wasn't for the older kids in the home, um, baby would stay in this all the time because this is how I get stuff done. Having two older daughters, a 14 year old and a set, uh, 18 year old, 14 and 18. Um, they like to hold the baby and they can, I feel comfortable of them holding the baby, doing baby care while I go do other things around the house. Um, so he's not in here as much as I had babies in it when I first, when I had my first baby. There are also different kinds of slings. I find this to be better for this age. This is a stretchy fabric, so it stretches a little bit one way, but then it stretches a lot the other way. I find I can get newborns nice and tight in it, and I don't have to use my hands. So when he's asleep like this, um, I didn't think I was going to, since I'm sitting, I wasn't gonna put him in. But you can put their head inside the sling, and you can even put this one up over the top and he can sleep and be totally secure while I bend over or while I do things in the kitchen and I don't have to have any hands on him. Because I'm just sitting, I like to have him out and be able to smell his head. The smell of a newborn is the most amazing smell ever, especially when they first are born, when they first set them on your chest. Make sure you absorb that smell because it's wonderful. Um, so anyway, the sling, very, um, important part of what I need to be able to get stuff done in my house. So again, I'm not saying that everybody needs this. This is what I would spend money on. Um, another thing is you need a way to feed your baby. The cheapest way to feed your baby is breastfeeding. I'm, I know that there are people who do not make milk. Um, their bodies have a problem. We live in a broken, sin-cursed world and there are people who cannot feed their baby um, in the way God intended with breast milk because of our broken sin cursed world. So I am not trying to make anyone feel bad in this video. The cheapest way though to feed your baby is breastfeeding because mom is going to be eating anyway and mom's body will be producing milk as long as there's not something wrong with her. So um, that is, so you, you need boobs to be able to feed your baby. Um, there are reasons why a person cannot breastfeed but there's also a lot of reasons where people do not breastfeed because of personal choice and that is between you and your husband and god don't let anyone else make you feel um, guilty of the decisions you made but i do know a lot of women who have stopped because they either are trying to schedule their baby too much. Um, I'm not saying it's bad to have a schedule for your baby, but I know women who have lost their milk supply because they try to have their baby on a very time schedule. And God made it so that baby will eat, which causes your body to produce milk. And the more baby asks to eat, the more milk your body will produce. And so that is God's design for it. Um, just like God has designed other things to happen in the world, in certain ways, that is how God has made our bodies. So if you're keeping your baby on a timetable and you say, baby only gets to eat every three hours and I am keeping it to three hours no matter what baby is cueing me on their need to eat, your body is not going to make milk in the most functional way and you will not be able to um, maintain your milk supply. So I just wanna say that babies, um, it can seem like a lot of work to feed your baby because you're sitting and feeding your baby. 
but the sitting and feeding your baby is also very important for your own personal recovery. Um, your body has been through a lot when you go through labor and delivery. And we had a baby who was stillborn um, from a group B, group B strep infection and some medical malpractice at the hospital. But um, in all of that, that wasn't our local hospital. So if you live near, near me, don't worry about it. It was out in California, <laughs> but um, the medical malpractice. But um, I tried to do too much. I didn't have a baby to snuggle. I didn't have a baby to sit down and feed every couple hours. And I went and did too much and I made myself sicker and sicker and sicker and was not able to recover well from that um, delivery, which then caused my next pregnancy to be really, really hard. So remember, just as much as your baby needs you to sit and feed them, your body needs you to sit down and rest and to just take in those little um, newborn moments because it does go by so fast. It doesn't seem it when you're on the other end. I mean, when you're in the midst of it, but when you're on the other end, you're like, wow, I wish I had enjoyed that. Because even with the sleepless nights and everything, um, they're only this little once. I'm amazed at how much he's already doing at two months old. And I've already had lots of kids. Um, and I forget how quickly they go from just the snuggly newborn who just sleeps all the time to suddenly they're, you know, being entertained by the world around them. So, um, back to saying, I find boobs to be very important so you can feed your baby. Um, you need blankets, um, something to keep the baby warm. Those could be handmade, those could be bought at the store, those could be big blankets, those could be small blankets, just something to keep your baby warm. Um, babies don't need to have your house to be very, very warm. Um, we keep our house at 67 during the day and 60 at night, and our babies have never had a problem regulating their temperature as long as you're keeping them in clothing. Um, and blankets if necessary. And the general rule of thumb, this can be different. Um, I had a friend who had a baby that overheated really easily, so this didn't work. But the general rule of thumb is the baby needs one more layer than you're wearing. So if you're in um, a long sleeve shirt and a sweatshirt, like let's say you're gonna go outside and you're in a long sleeve shirt and a sweatshirt, baby should be in a long sleeve shirt, a sweatshirt with a blanket over the top. Or if you're in a t-shirt, baby should have on a t-shirt and a long sleeve shirt one more layer than you have. Um, okay, we don't have cribs. We, sorry, something came up on my phone. Um, we have, we co-sleep with our babies. I have done that with all of them. When Virginia was first born, we had a pack and play that was going to be like, a, had a bassinet part, and that was gonna be where she slept, and she would not sleep. She would, you could have dropped, you could have dropped that child, and she would have slept right through it. But as soon as you started to set Virginia down into the pack and play, she would wake up and scream. And so the only way I was able to get sleep was we started to co-sleep. And there's a safe sleep seven or something like that. Um, I don't have it up on my phone right now, but it just talks about the safe ways to sleep. Like if the baby is breastfeeding, it's a safer sleep environment already because baby and mom take cues off each other. Um, if both parents are sober, totally makes sense. Um, I forget all of the different things, but um, a baby, if you are doing those seven safe things, um, baby's very like, very unlikely to have any problems with co-sleeping. When mom nurses their babies in bed, their body naturally takes on a C position around their baby. So if this is baby, you naturally make a C position around baby and you can't physically roll over when your body is in that position. So not rolling on baby. Um, there's also keeping, if dad doesn't feel safe sleeping next to baby, keeping the baby on the side of the bed away from dad, but you don't want your bed too close to a wall um, where baby could get stuck between the mattress. Um, how I sleep with my babies, my arm naturally goes around the baby. So like if I was laying down and baby was nursing, my arm naturally goes around the baby and baby doesn't roll. Um, you may wanna do something different when baby gets old enough to roll, but currently he's not rolling, so. Um, but we don't have any type of sleeping. He sleeps either in the sling on us or he is laying down next to somebody. Um, he's never asleep somewhere else. As he gets a little bit older, I will lay him on the bed and um, put pillows around him so he doesn't roll off um, and just be very aware of where he is, whether that be through a camera or a video monitor, uh, sorry, a um, baby monitor to listen to a sound. 
Um, and also I very early teach my babies how to safely get off a bed. Um, of course at this age it doesn't matter because he's not crawling around on his own, but when they start crawling around I teach them how to safely back off the bed so that they feet go first and if they fall their butt hits instead of going face down <laughs> off the bed. Um, the other important thing to have for a baby is the floor. Um, he's not quite at that stage yet. We're either always holding him or um, we're sleeping. You know, he's sleeping next to us, but when he gets old enough to be moving around, um, the floor is the best toy that your baby can have because they need to learn how they are in space. So like the floor for tummy time. We usually use the bed for tummy time right now, but um, being on their tummy or up against you like this if you're laying down is very important so they learn head control and um, where their bodies are in space, but they don't need um, other toys at this point. So I will go on to the list of the things that I do not feel a baby needs. And this video is getting very long, so I'm gonna make a second part of this video, which is gonna be mommy's needs after baby. So the things I do not feel, again, not saying these are wrong, these are the things I would not spend money on if I were to get, um, find out I was going to have a baby and we were in financial um, lows. So first thing is bottles and formula because we nurse our babies and God has always provided for that. But I remember with Virginia, I bought bottles and formula just with the fear of, well, what if I can't nurse? The truth of the matter is most babies um, nurse just fine. And if you're having a hospital birth, there are bottles and formula there if you need those um, because baby can't latch for whatever reason. They're not going to let your baby starve there at the hospital and you can send anybody out. I don't know a single person who would say, no, I won't go to Walmart and pick up some bottles and formula for you because you found out your baby can't nurse. Um, so I would not spend money to purchase those things before baby's born because the truth of the matter is almost everybody can breastfeed their baby. Again, I'm not saying that to try to make anyone feel bad because their bodies, um, are broken from this incursed world. I'm just saying that it's not something that um, is a real fear. It's, I don't know if that makes sense. But um, I would not spend money on bottles and formula ahead of baby being born unless you know you need them. I also would not spend money on a breast pump. Just so you know, most insurance companies will cover a breast pump to express your milk. But if you are going to be a stay at home mom and be able to be with your baby, you do not need to, um, get a huge storage of milk in your freezer. There are times that your baby may need more milk. Um, there's a lady I follow on in, on YouTube right now. Her name is Sarah from Our Tribe of Many and her baby was born very um, small and um, they had to do, she did have to pump so that baby could get those extra calories that she was too tired on the breast to get. But that is again, not the majority of people. Um, and there's lots of people who have breast pumps. And so if you do think you're going to need one, ask around um, just on your Facebook page. Say, hey, does, does anyone have a breast pump I can borrow? Because you can always um, go buy one if you find that it's a need you're going to have. But if it's just something you want to try out, um, it'd be better to borrow from a friend and make sure something that works for you. I have actually <clears throat> tried a breast pump um, and I can't produce much milk for a breast pump. I produce plenty of milk for my babies and I've actually helped feed other babies, um, but I just use my hand and manual express milk and I get a lot more milk that way than I do through a breast pump. So just know that if you do um, use a pump, do not let that um, help you decide whether you're making enough milk or not because some women's bodies do not respond well. Also, if you're using the breast pump after you've already fed your baby, your body has already given your baby as much milk as your baby um, usually needs. And so any extra is just that, it's extra. It's like dessert. Um, you, don't, you don't need to make an, a lot more. Um, one thing I did have, I'm going to, oh, 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 I'm gonna go grab this thing, which is on the other side of the room. Hold on, hold on, I'm right here. Get it. One thing I have purchased this time, which I have not used a lot, um, but other people have used it a lot. I just don't have a need to store milk because I am always with my child. I don't even really have many times where I'm 
Like this morning I ran to Walmart, which is two minutes from my house, um, and left the baby home with an older sister, but those times don't happen very often and I'm always home within the hour. Um, but this right here is called a Hakka. I bought it on Amazon for like 10 bucks. And so you fold it over like this and pretend this is the breast. You put it on and there's a little suction there when it's on an actual breast, not my hand. It would actually stay by itself. And um, this will fill up with milk from the side that you are not nursing on from just any letdown that you have. And you can get a half an ounce to two ounces of milk just from your letdown. And you can put those away in the freezer for a time you may have to be gone from your baby. I am not currently trying to store milk because we are leaving. Sorry, I found something on here. Um, because we are leaving for Tennessee soon and we're gonna be living in the camper and because I don't need the extra milk. But if you were somebody who, um, if we were staying here, I might have a supply of milk in the freezer just because we have a couple special needs in the house. And if I had to go to the hospital with somebody, um, I would want something for the baby to be able to have, but I don't need in any way to store up weeks worth of milk. So this covers that. I've also heard that this is very useful for mom and I will tell about that in the mom video. But in terms of baby, this is good to collect a little extra milk. Um, another thing, most babies don't need pacifiers. Babies will pacify, pacify themselves on the breast. Um, so that's how baby gets their comfort. So unless there are sometimes a medical reason why babies need a pacifier. I have a friend, a couple friends who've had babies in NICU recently who were born too early. And if baby can't be taking things by mouth because their intestinal tract can't take it, um, babies do need to learn how to suck so that they can eventually learn how to um, eat off the breast or out of a bottle. But um, the large majority of babies don't need a pacifier. Now a pacifier is something that a lot of people use and it could be a want for you. But if you only have so much money, it is not a need. Also pacifiers are not very expensive. Um, you can find them at Walmart. Pacifiers are not something good to use long term though for a baby. Um, whether it's a medical need or not, um, a pacifier can cause their mouth to be misshapen um, from long-term use. So make sure you look into that before you regularly stick a pacifier in your baby's mouth. Um, babies at this age don't need toys. Um, they just like to look at the world around them to see the light coming through the window, the ceiling fan. Babies this age can't see, like when they're first born, um, can't see very far from them. They can see about as far from the breast to mother's face. That's about the distance they can see. Um, and they're really attracted by bold colors. So blacks, whites, reds. Um, but you don't need anything special for babies at this age. They're developing just by learning about the world around them. They don't need specialty toys. Again, not a bad thing, but not something you must spend money on. Baby bath. I already explained earlier that babies do not need regular baths at this point and you can always bathe them. I've done this with multiple kids for various reasons, but you can bathe them in a sink, the kitchen sink or the bathroom sink. You can bathe them in a larger bucket or tub you might have in the house. You can bathe them um, with yourself in the shower. Be careful, they're very slippery, but um, we've done it where I will take a baby into the shower with me and Mark will come get the baby while I finish up my shower. Um, and that works also if they're sick, but I won't get too much into that right now. You can also take a bath with baby where you're in the bathtub and put baby on top of you and wash them there and then get them out. So it's another way you can bathe babies. Um, you do not need a crib or bassinet. I already explained that in the baby can sleep with you. Um, and baby could also sleep um, on the floor. I'm not saying that that's the best place for baby to sleep all the time, but if you're going somewhere and it's a safe place to be down on the floor, um, like not a pet around or that, you know, baby people that are going to stomp on them, but you can put a child down somewhere on a pad of blankets. Um, if you happen to be like out visiting a friend or something like that. I'm not saying put them on the floor at Walmart, but I'm saying in a house, in a safe place where they're not going to get stepped on, where they're going to be watched, you don't need to carry a playpen there or carry a bassinet there. Um, another thing that's not needed is a bouncy seat. Um, babies really need a lot of touch and they also need a lot of time on the floor where they can explore the world around them. So all of these other contraptions, um, not that you would use them at this age, but the jumperoos and the, um, 
walkers and the stand up things with the toys around them. All of those aren't needed for your baby's development and can actually be a backtrack to your baby's development. So I'm not going to get into all of that, but you don't need to buy any of those. Um, when I have a t I haven't needed to because I have the older kids, but when I had only little ones in the house, if I needed a baby close to me, you can take a laundry basket, like one of the, you know, rectangular ones, line it with blankets um, so they can't get their fingers stuck in the little holes and lay baby in that and take that around the house to be able to have a safe place to lay baby down that reminds people that, oh, there's a baby here. Just because I've had little ones and how it's worked in the past is we teach them, you do not touch baby when they are in this, you do not play with the basket. Um, and of course, I'm always right there. I don't leave them. But um, that was our way of having a place that I could safely set them down for a minute while I'm like, let's say I'm in the kitchen and I need to make pasta and I need to drain the pasta. I would put baby within sight, but away a little while, you know, away from me and go dump the pasta and then put it back and then put baby back in the sling or whatever. But that way I didn't have a chance of burning baby with the hot liquid. But that way I don't have to buy a bouncy seat for those few times that I need to set baby down. So that, that was that. So um, this be, ended up becoming a long video. But those are the things that I would say are essential baby needs with a limited budget, the things that I would purchase. Again, please let us know in the comments what you would purchase, what you feel are needs for your family. And like one thing I didn't mention on this list is a swing. Um, I've had a swing in the past because someone gave it to me and some of my babies liked it, some of my babies didn't like it. Babies don't need a swing for the most part. I do have a friend who has um, a daughter with sensory issues and the swing was very, very helpful for her. But if you have a limited budget, don't spend your money on a swing. Ask. All of these things, <laughs> baby equipment is used so quickly in people's lives. Ask on Facebook. Ask your friends. Say, could someone let me borrow this thing? Because it is so likely someone has one sitting I have two baby things sitting out in my garage if anyone wants a bouncy seat or wants a walker stand-up thing because we don't use them. I don't feel they're good for baby's development. They're sitting in my garage. So if somebody said, I need one of these because I need a safe place to put the baby, I have one. Um, so again, let us know what you need. Thank you for joining us on Hurting Little Cows to the Glory of God. We'll see you guys next time.